What's happening, everybody? It's Graham for DGP02 here, coming to you once again from the north end of Houston, Texas. And wouldn't you know it, those wonderful people here at Humble Hyundai have come up with the goods again, because that is the brand new 2017 Hyundai Elantra Sport. And guess what? Today, I've got the keys. So here we are, the brand new 2017 Hyundai Elantra Sport. A car very much anticipated not only by a lot of journalists such as myself, but now also enthusiasts. And the reasons for that are pretty darn clear. Now for starters, anybody who has known of the Elantra over the past couple of years has probably known that this is not the first time that Hyundai has stuck a sport badge on the back of any kind of Elantra, period. However, this particular vehicle now has the honors of being the most powerful Elantra that Hyundai has ever produced overall. With over 200 horsepower on tap, thanks to a generous donation from the Hyundai Veloster Turbo. Now we'll get to what makes that part of the car up here in just a second, but let's think about it for a second. What is it about this particular Elantra Sport that makes it such an enthusiast car rather than just some hopped up version of an everyday ordinary economy car? Now first off, when you think about it, a lot of today's enthusiasts are very young, so therefore you need something that's very affordable that even the younger generation can get into. Now Hyundai has put the starting price of the Elantra Sport at $22,750, which sounds like a lot of money to begin with, but then again, with Hyundai's philosophy of offering all kinds of good stuff as standard without really charging you too much in terms of extras, you can start to justify the price tag. Now my particular test vehicle as it sits here sits at $26,260 sticker price. Now the only reason for that is because this particular car has the upgraded premium package which really doesn't make itself known uh, from the exterior, however it's when you get on the inside as we will later on that you'll start to notice all of the big changes. Now one of the ways that this car defines itself as the Elantra Sport, aside from the performance side of things, is on the exterior and it really makes itself known with a lot of things such as the external body cladding. So we start here at the front and we have these very beautifully reworked uh, projector headlights. They are standard projectors, however this particular car has been upgraded with the high intensity discharge headlights with the automatic function and as you can see the inner workings here have been very generously reworked with lashings of the matte silver and of course the sport gives you these little red accents here on the side of the light which actually looks very very nice uh, but the big change here is the front side and rear faces you do have these little air pockets that uh, are here right on the inside or the outer portion, sorry, of uh, each of these little pieces here on the side. You have LED daytime running lights, and then of course the matte silver trim that runs around the outside of each area. And that all leads into this beautifully reworked center grille here, of course adorned with a nice little red turbo badge, but you have this gloss black finish that goes around the outside rather than the standard chrome. Kind of these little connecting marks here rather than just cutting it off right there and having this piece uh, be body color. You also have these beautiful matte silver uh, split uh, slats here in the front and then of course it's a nice open face to allow air to be directed to not only the intercooler for the turbocharged engine underneath but also to the larger radiator. Now looking at it from the front, I definitely gotta say I like the exterior. It's not too over the top and it's not too excessive but it definitely does make a statement for itself. Now moving around the side of the car, dimensionally the Elantra Sport is no bigger or no smaller than the ordinary Elantras being the SE, Eco, and Limited. So dimensionally you're really not losing out on much uh, despite the fact it has the upgraded body kit and whatnot. 
Now here on the sides, we can see this car has the standard 18 inch painted and machine faced alloy wheels. These are the standard wheels on the Elantra Sport and there are no other designs available for this particular trim. Uh, you have four wheel disc brakes all the way around and one of the big improvements compared to the normal two liter naturally aspirated Elantras is at the back where the Elantra Sport now has independent rear suspension rather than the solid beam axle uh, that was given to the other three Elantras in the family. Now as far as the design of the wheels, I really think they do set it off and they really do contrast nicely, especially with this Symphony Air silver uh, paint color that our particular test vehicle is wearing here. Now from a side profile, the Elantra Sport really does give off a much more, well, sporty kind of appearance. Uh, it's a little more low slung. It really looks a lot more aggressive compared to the sort of mundane uh, or just everyday look of the ordinary uh, Elantras in the rest of the family. Here on the exterior and on the side, we have the body color exterior mirrors. We have the LED turn signals integrated in. This car does come with blind spot monitoring as standard, which is a nice little feature to add. Now the premium package on the exterior does roll in the power tilting and sliding sunroof. The base Elantra Sport will not have that. However, if you want to spend the extra 2400 bucks, you will get the sunroof as part of the deal. Now also standard here on the Elantra Sport is the uh, proximity key keyless access system. So you just have the uh, key fob in your pocket and use the button on the door here uh, on both of the front door handles to lock and unlock the vehicle as well. Now here at the side you can also see the side skirts a little bit lower and a little more aggressive here in terms of their styling. They stick out just a bit more here at the back uh, and again it all adds to this car's a little bit more lower uh, and aggressive stance. Now moving around back just up top real quick, we do also have the body color shark fin style antenna so that uh, ties in with the Clarify uh, high definition radio and whatnot so it gives you the clearest radio signal possible. You also have rear heating defrosting glass and a rear heating defroster as well. And as we move around the back of the car, again, uh, the design is still very familiar as far as the Elantra is concerned. However, there are uh, sportier and more subtle changes. So they have reworked the inner workings of the taillights here. You now have yellow uh, turn signal markers here on the standard car. It's just red up top and then clear all the way across the bottom. Uh, they have reworked the shapes of the LED taillights here as standard, so a little bit nicer, but a little bit of an edgier design. Of course, you have the sport badge running across the back, letting you letting uh, other people know that you do have something special. And then, of course, we finish off the exterior body cladding with the underside of the rear bumper, which has this black plastic diffuser here with these nice little fins on it. You have a twin tip aluminum aluminum exhaust, which sounds absolutely glorious uh, from, uh, especially from a cold start. It's got a nice little raspiness to it. And then of course you have the nice bits of gloss black, just lightly accenting this uh, diffuser area down low. Now finally, finishing everything off here at the back of the vehicle, of course we do have the hands-free smart trunk access as you just saw. Uh, that's included alongside the proximity key keyless access and that also does include a re uh, rear backup camera mounted back here as well and that coincides with the touchscreen radio interface on the inside. Now a couple other notes about this car aside from the price tag that makes this thing uh, an enthusiast car. As I mentioned, the independent rear suspension so the driving dynamics are a little bit sharper and a little bit sportier, but also that this is the first Elantra to be offered as standard, at least in the higher trim levels, with a six-speed manual transmission as standard equipment. You can get this car as an automatic, and unfortunately that's the case with my particular tester here, but if you are a little bit more of an enthusiast and you enjoy rowing through the gears yourself, you will enjoy the fact that this car does come with a six-speed manual transmission as standard equipment. But as much fun as it is to look at the exterior of this car, Hyundai has made even more changes when you finally get inside.
Now when first opening the door and examining the Elantra Sports interior, there's one thing that jumps out at me right off the bat, and that is the fact that even though Hyundai has made a few changes to the Elantra Sports interior to, well, make it feel a lot more sporty, such as the three-spoke D-cut steering wheel and these extra supportive bucket seats, there are still a couple of gripes that I have with this thing, and the major one that I'm staring at is the fact that the interior is kind of monochromatic. There are a few subtle splashes of color here and there that you'll find around the interior, but things like this, the fact that the door handle is solid black, it's not matte silver or anything like that, and then of course you get to the aesthetics of the vehicle. So hard touch plastics here on the top portion of the door, a little bit more around the middle and leading down to the speaker grill. Uh, you have this very cheap uh, leatherette-like material here for the armrest. I know Hyundai has a lot more supple leathers in their collection, so I would have expected that to maybe be right here, a little bit more of a comfortable place to rest my elbow, of course. Uh, you do have perforated leather here for the middle part of the door, uh, so that is nice that Hyundai did put a little bit of leather here, but again, um, it's just all one color, and that just kind of bothers me a little bit as far as the visual appeal. This is a sporty car. I would have expected a few more splashes of color to be had uh, around the interior, um, but nevertheless, you do have all of your powered conveniences, so you have your power mirrors, your power door locks, uh, the proximity key, keyless access, as I showed you earlier, which includes push button start. Um, you also have the window locks and automatic one touch up and down driver's window and all the rest of your power windows as well. Looking down below, you do have some pretty decent storage, so some nice maps could fit in there. You do have a bottle holder big enough for, say, a soda can or just your average size bottle. But looking here on the door, this is also where the premium package comes into play. This car has the upgraded uh, eight-speaker premium Infinity audio system, and trust me, this car does make a very good noise when you turn the radio on. But looking at the rest of the interior really quick, again, there are a few subtle touches that Hyundai has made uh, to the interior to make it a little bit more differentiated than the standard Elantra. So you have the sport embossment here on the seats. Uh, then of course, like I said, there are a few splashes of color in here. So you have this nice uh, color contrast red stitching that's here on the seats. Uh, it's on the center console. It's on the shift boot. Uh, there's a little red stripe here on the steering wheel. And then of course the red stitching runs around the interior rim as well. Uh, and then finally over here to the left of the steering wheel, you have your instrument dimming, uh, blind spot monitoring, as I said before, and traction control. And finally adding a a little bit of bling here. We also have these nicely and newly etched uh, turned aluminum sill plates nonetheless. So kind of decent, but I still wish there was a little bit more color to this interior, uh, at least upon initial impressions. Now first sitting down in the driver's seat of the Elantra Sport here, the first thing I want to make mention of are these seats. Like I said, Hyundai did rework them just a little bit, uh, more aggressive bolstering, and then of course the color contrast red stitching here. Uh, but as far as the materials go, uh, the leather is a little on the firm side, but I'm thinking that's just because this is a brand new car with only eight miles on it right now, um, but the thing that I really love about these is even though they've got thicker bolsters on them, they hug you and support you in all the right places. Like I said, I'm a bit of a tall person at six foot one, but I'm also very broad shouldered. And the fact they didn't put big bolsters up here towards the top of the seat means you have a little bit more shoulder room and you can actually wiggle around. You also have great mid torso support as well with these aggressive bolsters. They allow you to wiggle around, but they still hug you very tightly in all the right spots as well. Thigh support the same story can be said. It is a little on the wide side, but plenty of wiggle room for your legs and still does hold you in very nicely. Now, as far as visibility goes, again, me being a taller person, you would think that I'd be hampered by visibility, being the fact that the windshield is raked so steeply on this vehicle. But really, my only complaint is the fact that the hood drops away so far that it really just looks like the hood drops straight off right there at the edge of the windshield. You really can't tell how far out the front of this car goes, even just sitting here in the driving position and uh, with as tall of a person as I am. Now, if you want to adjust the seats, unfortunately, there are no power adjustments on this trim level. Uh, for either the driver or the passenger seat. Um, so that is a little disappointing with all the money that Hyundai has thrown at this thing. Uh, I would have expected maybe some power adjustments here on the seats, but that's really the least of my worries. Now, surprisingly, it is a little warm here in Houston today, so we'll go ahead and fire this thing up, get the AC running, and move on to other things. So this is Hyundai's standard key fob, all of your standard functions, lock, unlock, hold the, uh, this button here for trunk. Uh, you do have the panic button as well. And then, of course, you have this little silver button at the bottom, which releases 
uses this retractable key blade in the bottom, uh, which can be used to unlock the vehicle should either the car itself or perhaps this little key fob here lose power. But it's like any other smart key system, so just have the key fob anywhere within the vehicle, such as I have it there in the cup holder. This vehicle does come standard with those very nice aluminum sport pedals as well, if I uh, may mention. Uh, but also, you put your foot on the brake, and then you've got this nice little dark gray, kind of a gunmetal color start button up here on the dash. But once you've done all of that, just hit the button and you should get some power. Now, like I forementioned, if you are familiar with the current crop of Elantras and have sat in one of their interiors, then the overall ambiance and design inside the cabin here may feel quite familiar. But like I said, you will notice a few specific differences, and the most of which happens here in front of the driver. So you have this new three-spoke leather-trimmed D-cut multifunction steering wheel. The D-cut uh, design, of course, comes with the flat bottom, again, with the little red stripe here and the red striping around uh, the interior interior rim of the wheel. You have perforations here at about nine and three. Very aggressive uh, grip bolsters here at 10 and two. Great place to rest your thumbs. They're not too edgy and they don't uh, protrude out of the inner part of the wheel too much. So very nice to grip onto and provide a very nice place to rest your hands. As far as the rest of the leather here on the top and bottom part of the wheel, it's very soft and very supple. And like I said, this is the type of leather that I wish they would have put maybe here on the armrest on the door. It just feels a little cheap this side. Uh, uh, leatherette kind of material here and I wish it was more like what they've put on the steering wheel here but as always it's adorned with all of its usual electronic conveniences so you do have your voice recognition radio mode hands-free radio controls uh, blue uh, hands-free Bluetooth calling you have your button here that controls your liquid crystal display up there between your tachometer and speedometer and of course you also have your standard cruise control functions as well now on the subject of cruise control that is one option that this car does not have even as an available option in the book, which is the active cruise control function. Uh, if this car were available with something like an ultimate package, like say on the Elantra Limited, you would get things such as the adaptive or smart cruise control. But as you can see here, the Elantra Sport, even in its most loaded form, does not have that. Now, of course, you do have a small uh, reworked split spoke here at the bottom of the wheel as well. So that's just a nice little uh, cosmetic touch here that adorns uh, the steering wheel. The other thing you'll notice is the re worked gauge cluster very reminiscent of that in the Sonata turbo as well so you have the reworked numerics you have the red needles that both face directly south uh, these are also very familiar from the Hyundai Veloster turbo uh, again this car has a little bit of influence from the Veloster turbo in more than one way um, but going on to this uh, little uh, gauge cluster display here uh, again it's all controlled via this little book button right here and also this little up and down arrow here uh, where we're at right now you do have things such as your active uh, fuel economy and your average fuel economy and distance to empty which as you can see this car here does need a drink uh, but you can go up and down you can cycle between your trip meters digital speedometer and so on you can control things such as the navigation, which unfortunately, this one does not have its available SD card uh, installed to control the navigation. So I'll show a, a separate clip of the navigation here in just a bit. Uh, but you also have audio video, such as your radio controls, tire pressures, which are displayed once you start driving. And then of course you have all of your different controls uh, for different interior things and even the smart trunk access. So that is controlled here via the door function. You go all the way down. And as you can see, it's a smart trunk there. You can turn that on or off, so it's not always constantly on. Uh, interior lights, the little chime that comes on when you first unlock the vehicle and open the door. Uh, convenience features, uh, service intervals, other features, and then of course you can reset everything. And then just push the button again and it goes right back to the screen where we were in the beginning. Now some of the other features here in front of the driver, you do have the automatic projector headlights as I was saying before. These are uh, standard high intensity discharge lights uh, here on the Sport uh, with the LED daytime running lights. So you flick that to auto uh, and your daytime running lights automatically come on. Uh, and also here on the steering wheel, we do have steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. So you pull the right one here with the plus to go up a gear and pull the left one to go down a gear. 
Now I was mentioning over here, uh, as I said before, just to kind of reiterate, you do have blind spot monitoring as standard, instrumentation dimming and traction control as well, just to the left of the wheel. But then you get here to the center console and this is where the premium package comes into play because we now have the eight inch touchscreen display. Uh, again, like I said, it does come with navigation, but unfortunately, if I push the map button here, as it says, the uh, SD card is not inserted, but I'll go ahead and insert a clip of it here. And alongside that navigation, it of course is pretty much your standard Hyundai display. Uh, so you can scroll through things very much like a smartphone, which is one of the things I actually like about this display here. Uh, control things such as your radio, music, uh, change the image. You have your auxiliary input, which is located uh, down near the shifter, Pandora internet radio, navigation, Bluetooth phone, uh, your Blue Link apps. This of course does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, just like all of the other Elantras with this particular system in it. Uh, this, uh, the premium package does also include your Blue Link application system, uh, Blue Link car connectivity, and it also includes a three month subscription to the Blue Link remote start system, which is a very nice thing to have, especially if you live here in Houston, uh, where it can get pretty warm, especially during the summer months, or it's actually gotten pretty cold here during the winter. But also, uh, if you have this car connected to a LTE or 4G uh, Wi Fi service anywhere, you can access this little feature, which is one of my favorites, which is the sound hound option. So let's Say you hear a song on the radio, uh, you like what it sounds like, or you like something about it, but the radio is not telling you what song it is. You push that and it can automatically tell you things such as uh, active lyrics, and it can also tell you the artist, uh, the song, what year it came out, so on and so forth. And like I said, you can just scroll all the way up or down just like a smartphone. Uh, the touch responsiveness is pretty decent. Hyundai has gotten a little bit better with this. Uh, it's still not the fastest thing in the world, but still, as you can see, uh, it does respond all the same. Uh, now, of course, you can do do the my menu function and that just takes you to your favorite apps and then of course like I said this car has the infinity premium audio system which does like I said sound pretty good especially in such a small cabin So as I said, the Infinity stereo system definitely does make a very nice sound, and it sounds even better as I've experienced in other cars with the same system uh, with the bass turned all the way up. It really will rattle the mirrors in here very, very nicely. Uh, but moving on down from the touchscreen display, you of course have the physical buttons as well. So if you don't uh, want to be bothered to put your fingerprints or whatever on the touchscreen, uh, you have things such as your radio, media buttons, your seek track buttons, the slot for the SD card, the map button, Bluetooth phone, Blue Link, and then of course, uh, the display setup as well. And then of course you have our good friends, the tuning and volume knobs. I'm glad there's no touch screen, anything right there except for the big display itself. That's something I've really liked about a lot of today's modern cars with the exception of only a few. Uh, now the premium package does also include the automatic dual zone climate control system here. As you can see, it also comes with Hyundai's clean air, air ionizer and purifier. So uh, it's a very clever filtration system that filters out all the pollens and bad stuff from the outside. Uh, as I said, dual zone system, so you have automatic climate control, you can synchronize them, so you can control the temperatures independently like that, turn it on, and you can do uh, the same thing over on this side as well. Now you've got your fan speed here in the middle, you can turn it off, you've got your climate zones over here on the right, air conditioning recycling, introducing the AC, and then of course you have front and rear defroster all the same. Now I talked about that iPod and auxiliary input that's located down here in the center console in this very nice little cubby. It's about the size of uh, your average everyday smartphone, so you could fit maybe your phone or something down the, uh, in there as well. Uh, like I said, you've got your iPod USB and auxiliary jacks and two 12 volt 180 80 watt direct current outlets uh, that can be used for a charger or what have you. And one little fault I found with that USB port is it only recognizes your phones as a media device. Uh, unfortunately, I've had experiences where I've plugged my phone in there and it doesn't charge it worth a darn. So that's kind of a, a gripe that I have. And then moving on beyond that, we of course get to the transmission. Now, like I said, in this particular one, we have the seven speed EcoShift dual clutch automatic transmission, another donation from the Hyundai 
Veloster Turbo. Um, but like I said, you can also get this car with the standard six-speed manual transmission if you so desire and you like rowing through the gears yourself like I do. Uh, now you've got a very nice little leather shift knob tr trimmed with a little bit of matte silver here around the collar and also on the upper part of the knob, drifting, uh, drifting off into a nice uh, leather shift boot here with the red uh, stitching. Now, one complaint I've had about dual clutch systems is they seem to kind of sh uh, shudder and shake a little bit when they take off. Um, very much like a manual transmission, the feeling you get is like you're letting out the clutch, uh, but it's a little sluggish for me. Um, but nevertheless, once you get the car going, the gear changes are very responsive. Uh, so it's really all a matter of taste if you want the car for more usability or if you want to take charge of the gears yourself. Uh, now here in the front, you do also have three-stage heated seats for both sides. Uh, no ventilated seat option available here. Uh, that's only on the Elantra Limited, which is a whole different review. Uh, you do have the drive mode select, but also keeping in theme with the sportiness of this car, you do not have eco mode. You only have uh, normal and sport mode. So I press it and only sport mode comes up and then it goes away. So no eco friendliness or anything about like, or anything like that here. This car is all about performance. Now you do also have your standard cup holders here in the middle and finally finishing it all off you do have a nice kind of leatherette bound center console here that feels rather firm feels kind of rubbery doesn't really have a lot of give to it but again it does have that red color contrast stitching all the same you open it up and there's another uh, USB outlet located in here as well and that one apparently can charge your phone not the one that's located down there. And last but not least, moving up to the roof here, we also have the auto dimming rear view mirror with the home link garage door system. That's also a part of the premium package, which also includes uh, the compass and the controls for your blue link telematics and car care. And as I also mentioned, there is the power tilting and sliding sunroof, which is included as a part of the premium package as well. Uh, so you do also have that and the controls for which are located right here. It's just a simple trigger and it's a one touch automated function. Now, if there's one thing that impresses me about the Elantra in general, so not just this Elantra Sport here, it's the rear seat legroom. I mean, this is a compact four-door sedan, but even so, as you can see, the rear entry with the door open here is quite large, so it does make for pretty easy uh, entrance and exit, even for taller people like myself, as I'm six foot one. So, stepping down into the back of the vehicle here, again, you do have to step down. This is a uh, sportier compact sedan here. Uh, for starters, legroom as you can see I can fit pretty much my hand between the front of my knee and the back of the seat here uh, unfortunately the back of the seat is plastic but it is indented so that's nice that Hyundai has thought of the taller folks that might sit in the back here and this seat is where I would have it if I were driving this vehicle so even though I may be a taller driver even taller people can still sit in the back seat all the way uh, now, of, co of course, nobody's going to be sitting in the passenger side, so that seat's a little uh, out of sorts, but you do have the one map pocket here in the rear of the passenger seat. And moving to the upper part of the back seats here, you do have this fold-down armrest with a nice little bit of soft kind of leather-like material here. I say leather-like because it's still a little firm, but it does have some decent give to it. And then, of course, these rear seats do fold completely flat, and they are 60-40 split fold as well. Now, when it comes to the cargo capacity in the Elantra Sport, it's pretty much the same as all of the others. First off, when you open the trunk, you'll notice that the trunk opening itself is not only decently wide, so you can actually put some pretty decently sized things in there, but it's also rather tall, so even bulkier items can fit in with ease. The initial cargo volume is 14.4 cubic feet of space, and that's with those 60-40 split fold seats up. If you were to fold those down, of course, you would extend that cargo space quite dramatically. Now, as you can see with this uh, particular one, we also have the dealer installed uh, cargo net here. So that's nice that Hyundai gives you that. One of the only complaints that I have is the fact that these hinges do actually intrude on the inside of the trunk lining. So there's no slot for them to slide into. So preferably you want to keep your luggage about here inward uh, so it doesn't get smashed by those trunk hinges. Now, when I said that the Elantra Sport received a hefty donation from the Hyundai Veloster Turbo, this is what I was talking about. Because opening the hood of the Elantra Sport here reveals the same 1.6 liter turbocharged and direct fuel injected four cylinder engine that you're going to find in the Veloster Turbo, the Sonata Eco, and certain versions of the newer generation Hyundai Tucson. The engine is rated exactly the same as the Veloster, 201 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque. Now, 
Now that is all thanks to a twin scroll turbocharger, a double overhead cam setup with 16 valves. Like I said, it's direct fuel injected and it also carries Hyundai's dual continuous variable valve timing. Now as far as fuel economy goes, with the seven speed automatic that I have here, you're looking at 26 miles per gallon in the city and 33 miles per gallon on the interstate highway. Now this car isn't exactly a heavyweight, but nor is it a lightweight. This particular car rings in at just over 3,100 pounds, and again, it is front wheel drive. So a pretty admirable performer, considering the fact that it only has a 1,600 cc engine under the hood, but hopefully this will still be a very admirable performer in the compact section. Now even though this particular example is the sportiest of the Elantra breed, Hyundai certainly hasn't skimped out when it comes to the Elantra Sport's safety features. Now you of course have things such as your usual array of airbags and the collision detecting seat belts, so if they notice a heavy braking or anything like that, the seat, belt, the seat belts will automatically lock themselves in place. Now as I mentioned before, this particular model comes standard with blind spot monitoring. You also have traction control, anti-lock brakes, as I said before with the four-wheel disc brake setup and then of course you have your usual array of airbags so getting into the passenger seat here we have uh, the dual front impact airbags for both the driver and passenger you have the side impact and side curtain airbags as noted by their appropriate tags on the seats and also the small little notification up there at the top of the b pillar um, but apart from that as far as safety goes again it's pretty much your standard stuff now sitting here in the passenger seat i do have ample foot room i have the seat exactly where I would prefer it uh, if I were a passenger in this vehicle. But opening the glove box here, uh, it is kind of damped. Um, it's not exactly the lightest falling glove box I've ever felt. And those of you who may have noticed that there was a large opening over there next to the driver's door, if you were paying attention earlier, it's not missing a piece. It's just right here in the glove box. And that's just because this particular car hasn't even been PDI'd yet or pre-delivery inspected. Uh, so it's very lucky that we managed to get our hands on this before even the text did. So that's obviously obviously very nice and then of course you have all your reading materials you have a license plate br uh, bracket since here in Texas they do require uh, two license plates instead of just one um, but overall it's a pretty sizable glove box you can fit all kinds of things napkins maps and the like in there so overall, my initial impressions and final impressions on the Elantra Sport are that it really does now have a very solid place in terms of the sport, uh, the sportier section of the compact sedan, being the fact that it really doesn't have a whole lot of competition uh, like a newer Mazda Speed 3 uh, and really only the upcoming Civic Si and a couple of other cars in that same category. I'd say the Elantra Sport is pretty darn good where it sits. And unfortunately, on that note, viewers, our time here with the brand new 2017 Hyundai Elantra Sport has now unfortunately come to a close. I do hope you guys have enjoyed this review as much as I have had fun making it for you guys. Now, if you like what you see, feel free to like, subscribe, or leave a comment in the box below. And in the end, a huge thanks goes out once again to the folks here at Humble Hyundai for providing us with their only example of the new Elantra Sport for us to have a look at today. Now, if you want to find out any more information, about their inventory and contact information, just simply visit the link that I've provided in the description box below. But again, guys, from up here in the north end of Houston, Texas, this is Grand Prix GTP 02 signing out. Until next time.